I decided to make an instructional how-to video in hopes of helping seniors and future seniors learn how to advocate step by step. Using the skills I learned in radio and TV class and speaking and presenting skills I learned my freshman and sophomore year in Civitas, I created my film that literally writes out each step, knowing that visual aids are better at keeping someone's attention than having an actual person talk in front of the camera. I used, I used an anagram called California to explain each step in advocacy, as well as representation of people and things. So, My name is Nicole Temple. I am a senior at Rio Americano High School. I am also a student enrolled in Civitas, a political studies and public service academy. As a requirement of being a senior in Civitas, I must complete a senior project. This is a large scale project that is done outside the classroom that must leave a lasting impression on the community and or its people. My initial senior project was to make a documentary on the supposed removal of the hallway lockers at Rio. Yet, as soon as I began work... So, the district uh, basically decided that they would reverse their decision of removing lockers and replace them with 14 The district changed its mind. Thanks to this unexpected outcome, I now have to create a new project. It was then I noticed how much difficulty Civitas seniors and Civitas seniors before them were having figuring out what to do for their senior projects and where to begin. So I decided my senior project would be a video on advocacy, what it is and how you can advocate too. The first thing that you need to know is what advocacy is. It's defined as public support for or recommendation of a particular cause or policy or the support of a cause or belief. You can support and advocate for thousands of different things. They can be political parties, religious groups, humane societies, researching, curing specific diseases, eco-friendly programs, and most other nonprofit organizations. Now here's the tricky part, how to advocate. The best way to plan is to follow California, a simple anagram I created to explain each step. cause. Think of a problem in today's world. It can be local or global. Next is assess. What is the problem specifically? Is anyone already taking steps to solve this problem? Who are they and where is their base of operations? Are they a nonprofit? Next is link. Find people who share your interest or concern in the topic. Contact them and see if they would like to participate in your project. They don't have to be friends or family. Next is initiate. Start working on your project. Make plans and appointments that you will need This step does not mean that you need to use any kind of money at all. Ask yourself what kind of supplies you will need and where you can get them. Some things you can find around your home. Others you can get through donations and or borrowing from your friends or family. And some items you can make yourself. Also, think about how much work will be needed with setup and cleanup, and consider whether or not you will need the help of volunteers. The next step is organize. Now that you know what you're doing and what materials you're going to have for it, it's time to put two and two together. Coordinate your appointments and interviews and make sure that you can attend to each one. Be extra careful about this if they are going to be speaking at your event. 
Next is review. Take time to reflect on your project's progress. Does it seem like it's coming together? Are there any open areas or questions that you can secure a definite answer to? If your project doesn't seem to be cohesive enough, you might want to consider canceling the project now and starting a new one. Don't chase after something if it won't have good results. Once you've completed review, your next step is notify. Your friends, family, and fellow students should already know that you are working on this project. Now, it's time to reach out to your community. Send notifications, emails, make flyers, and even consider going door to door around your neighborhood. Just remember to be polite, calm, and confident. You're representing that cause when you advertise. Make sure your people associate a positive feeling with your project. Then comes the biggest and most important step of all, invest. The final day is here, and all of your materials, knowledge, and supporters will need to be put together. Make sure everything is running smoothly. Direct volunteers, manage your materials, and take note of the overall mood of your audience. Make sure it's a positive one. Don't forget to thank your guest speakers and or presenters for taking time out to attend. And make sure their area where you conducted your presentation is left as clean or even cleaner than it was before you started. The final step is achieve. You've successfully advocated for a cause. Now it's time to celebrate and reflect. Or some good points. Bad ones? Do you want to do this again? Do you feel your project has actually made a difference? Use these questions to plan your next event to be bigger and better than the previous one. My name is Nicole Temple, and thank you for listening.
views and ideas between my friends who weren't a part of Civitas and me. I also started seeing the bias in media, how they frequently used loud and attention-getting words to strike emotion into people for the sole purpose of giving more viewers and ratings, not always portraying the news correctly, and often overstating and embellishing the truth. To this day, I am still hesitant in sharing news until things have calmed down and we can get a clear answer on the situation. My sophomore year was a bit easier, but not by a lot. I knew what to expect, but it was still a cumbersome load, and it was not easy to juggle along with six other periods. Speech class I enjoyed a great deal, only after I had been forced to actually go up there and publicly speak. Miss Seifel was a great teacher, especially since she had to pull teeth to get any of us to stand up and speak. We had all developed the stigma that we were too cool for interacting with the teachers in class and would make more friends and look less uncool if we just hid amongst the crowd and tried to stay invisible. One by one, though, she yanked us out of our shell and made us find our voice. I don't think I would have ever developed half the communication skills I have today if it wasn't for her. International relations taught me to look outside of my own backyard and see what life would be like living in another country and just how hard it is for UN meetings to actually make decisions due to the extreme diversity amongst each of the representatives. Some allies, some sworn enemies, who will stop at nothing to impede each other's success by any means, from something as simple as social reform to all-out trade embargoes on one another. My junior year was less academic and more work on my own part outside of the classroom, transitioning me into my senior project. Though the main goal was the internship during the second semester, Philosophy brought up concepts and clarifications to common ideas that I really hadn't taken into consideration, such as Sigmund Freud's sexual theories. Though I had heard of it, I was too squeamish to actually learn any about what his theories were. Through philosophy, I had to buckle down and learn it. Despite being a little flustered at the end, I understood where he was envisioning these concepts, but I can't say that I agree that they are universally acceptable to all human beings. Some concepts I hadn't heard of, but I was glad that I learned it, such as the ideals of Francis Bacon, a philosopher who reformed the way education was applied, making the advancements of human achievements leagues better than what the current state of education could have ever, could have ever produced by encouraging the further focus of science and math and less on the focus of religious studies only. Once we completed the academic portion of Civitas, it was now time for us to apply what we had learned. And through our successful internship, first, we had to find a nonprofit organization that would be willing to take 16 and 17 year olds and only about 100 hours of volunteering and service as in as unpaid interns. Then, using our speech, communication, and proper resume for romantic skills, actually get hired by them. I was lucky enough to get an internship that aligns with my passion animal caretaking. I was intern and still work at the Sacramento Zoo where I educate children, teen, children, teens, and adults on a variety of animal-based knowledge and environmental awareness. I also developed a greater experience on just what veterinary science is like, which is the field that I'm hoping to major in while in college. So far, my senior year has been my best year. Though I still have a great deal of stress on my shoulders, I feel more free since I'm able to express my personality through my senior project. Originally, I was going to make a farmer's market, but when it seemed like there was too great a time constraint for such a large event in such a small amount of time, Ms. Reed suggested I make a documentary about the potential removal of school lockers after seeing the video I had created in radio and TV. I got about a quarter of the way into working on that project when suddenly I received incredibly ironic news. After my last project went out the door, I decided to do something more beneficial to the Civitas community and less dependent on the fickle minds of educational bureaucracy. I decided to create an instructional video on how on advocacy and how to advocate for something. Since I noticed how many seniors struggle with getting their projects started and seeing that the number one reason many people with strong opinions about topics don't voice them because they don't know where to begin. In conclusion, my overall experience with Subtos can be described as a very difficult and strenuous academy, but by far worth the work. I noticed sticking with the program was half the battle, as each year, roughly two, as each year, the two roughly jam-packed classes shrink to about two-thirds of one class. Had those people shown the drive and tenacity to stay, 
they also would have reaped the rewards of prestige that we do now, such as an internship at a highly respectable organization, knowledge on the political world, state and local government, creating and presenting speeches and public speaking, politi politics on a global scale, philosophy, experience with interning in a professional environment, philosophical thought and interpersonal questioning, and advocating and making global impact independent of professional guidance. Though I'm willing to admit I'm not a perfect student, and I've learned that I'm not a perfect student, and I could have learned more had I taken better advantage of my opportunities, I still learned a great deal about politics, professionalism, and the real world that will give me a great advantage while in college, and working in the adult world, which is the main goal of any college level prep class. I am grateful that I was given the chance, despite its harsh work. I hope Civitas not only stays with Rio Americano, but spreads to all public schools, so that all seniors and all students have a chance to become greater civically minded and take more advanced steps with their learning if they choose to. My name is Nicole Temple. Thank you for listening.